and something called the triune brain theory, made popular by Peter Levine. In the triune brain theory, certain things happen to us when we face stress, when we get scared, when we face adversity. We literally have chemical changes in our body. So part of this thing that says I am hijacked is because literally when I have high adrenaline and low oxytocin and high cortisol, I'm a certain way. I, I'm, I'm just a certain way. I can't get it out of my system, right? So you're right. Once it takes over, you are hijacked. But what all the studies say is that there's a point before that happens that we can regain a skill or learn a skill so we can learn to regulate anywhere. Okay? So let me break down the triune brain theory real quick. The front part of our brain is the neocortex. This is where we're rational, creative, analytic, linguistic. Okay? It's where we think of socially appropriate and inappropriate behaviors. It's the understanding of time. Huge concept, understanding of time. All rests here. Limbic brain is the blue part of our brain, and that's the part of our brain where our emotions lie. This is about reproducing the species. What do you do in the face of danger? Do you go towards danger? Do you go away from danger? Or do you freeze in the face of danger? Okay? All of these have different functions. They have different blood supplies. And you can tell because what they can measure is brain wave production. We have alpha, theta, beta, and delta waves. And we can put little scans on our brain, little nodes on our head, and we can actually see it. But also, we can look at blood flow. So what they'll do is they'll give you an injection of a very light radioactive substance, and they'll do a SPECT scan. And the SPECT scan allows us to see a movie of our brain in action. So they give you this thing, and then they say, here, do a math problem. Now look at pictures of 9-11. And now look at pictures of a baby. And they can watch patterns in the brain and see how it responds. That's the foundation for this work. So what happens under stress? Danger comes in, we get less blood supply to the front part of our brain. We get more blood supply to the back parts of our brain. If this is intelligence, in the face of adversity and threat, we get less intelligent and more emotional and more reactive. It's how we're designed. It's a perfectly normal function. Okay? There's nothing broken in that model. Here's where it comes from early on. I'm walking through the jungle and I look down and I go, tiger footprint. It's not a good thing for me to do anything except be emotional and go, where's the tiger and get out of danger. This is slow, this is fast. 1.3 seconds, nine, less than 9 tenths of a second, 0.09. Very, very, very fast. Moderately slow, okay? So if I go, tiger footprint, Abyssinian tiger, Sumatran tiger, <laughs> Bengal tiger, I'm history. But if I stay in the back part of my brain, and I don't think, and I just move and act, I'll probably survive, and then those genes will be passed on. Okay? Intelligence. Another way to put this is wisdom, nonverbal wisdom, and the four Fs. Fight, flight, freeze, and reproduction. <laughs> And under threat, we get less intelligent and more emotional and more reactive. Okay? Have you ever been in a fight with a loved one? And all of a sudden, it comes out of your mouth. Blip, and you go, I can't believe I just said that. Right? Why? There's a social inhibition function that happens right here in the lower part of our brain. First thing to go offline. First thing to go offline, concept of time and social inhibitions. Okay? We do things we wouldn't normally do when we're stressed out.